the school system fails everyone because it's called physical education but you are <laughs> yeah. not actually learning anything about yourself <laughs> Never, you, are yeah. just you know the pain is one of the best teachers or let's say like guides in your life and i think people make that huge mistake that they try to numb it they try to like ignore it fitness and strength training and movement like this is not very simple thing it's on an equal level level as any other form of art or science if we look at like this as a ladder of different ages people are like toddlers they're like yes babies. because yeah when i was young when i was young i was good at this when i was young i was also able to do this and, and now it's like so hard and so blah 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 that's like complete nonsense. You should want to develop a relationship with your body. And the problem is with these other people that the relationship with their body is abusive. They always decide what to do. And the other relationship is something, it's a healthy relationship where both parties listen to each other and learn to communicate. I just wish I had the same understanding when I was a kid because I could have been not just good but great at almost any sport. Mm -hmm. yes, let's so Samuli, <clears throat> imagine you had this grand a genie of fitness and strength and power and the genie was like i will i will give you three years and you will gain like super strength you will you can do you know you can lift the heaviest possible weights you're going to be able to do very impressive skills but only for this three years period of time and after that three years i will give you a lot of injuries and pains you know your knee your shoulder let's say your bicep will tear and so on and so on and he will give you this this option, but for three years you're gonna be you have to think like you will really be like really strong. You will impress other people. You're gonna be feeling good about yourself. Uh, but after that, things will start to go downhill, and you're gonna have a very very hard time coming, you know, reaching your potential ever again. And I think this this kind of or decision is something that people make unconsciously in a way. So of course people don't have a genie telling them that they will end up in a bad place. But people make still these kind of choices with the training and even worse, because most people, when they, let's say they, they try to really quickly, like get results from their training, like they, they sacrifice their health. They don't really uh, focus on the health of the body because they they still have their health. So they don't feel that it's, that's important. So they will feel like they can sacrifice it because they don't really see that in the end, they might have to suffer for it. Like most people, it's not even three years, it might be like two years, you're gonna feel good, you're gonna be on the peak of your performance, and after that, it's just like downhill from there. And, and I would say, yeah. in many cases, it's one year. <laughs> it's just one year, and for us, maybe a couple of years also. It was like the same thing, because we also, like in a way, took this, um, how do I say, trade off in the beginning, like trading your health for the performance, trading the longevity for some kind of, uh, what we thought was the peak of the performance, actually. Because actually the trade-off is not even that you get the best possible performance, usually. It is the, the idea that people think is the best possible performance. But what we realize is that usually the heavyweights and whatever skills, that is not even it, but that is the trade-off in the end. Yes, and you asked me if I were to take it. Well, in many ways I did. <laughs> yes. Um, but, <laughs> but it's because I was kind of young, naive, inexperienced, and kind of like brain dead because of those factors. So I didn't even, like when you're young and when you don't really understand the whole picture so well, so you take the shortcuts and then you take the, just take everything at face value and just focus on getting the results as fast as possible. You don't really think about how all of these things are going to impact your life and health and body in general after like 10 years or 20 years. Mm, yeah, and I had the same thing. I, I was, But it wasn't even, I guess it's stupidity to an extent, but it's also just because you're in a, such a beginning state that you, you don't even feel what is going on in your body. I feel like the, the older you get, like you will automatically, your health starts to go a little bit worse if you don't pay attention to it. So older people, they generally start to value it because they know that they are not indestructible like they are not supermen and, and this, you know, the ego starts to go down. But the younger you are, and we were young, we felt powerful. We felt like we, we're going to be doing this, you know, forever. Like, so you don't, you don't have a, the correct knowledge of yourself and nor do you have the perspective of, of old age to really understand the, the, the trade-off that is happening or even understand at all, like even feel in your body. Because quite quickly what happened to us, at least luckily, why we even started to, 
like appreciate uh, some more, let's say, gentle but very effective training methods was because we felt that this is actually doing a lot of damage into our bodies. And, you know, the pain is one of the best teachers or let's say like guides in your life. And I think people make that huge mistake that they, they try to numb it. They try to like ignore it because, but how else are you going to be able to navigate like that the pain is good. It really is. It's just like a neutral, uh, let's say not neutral, but it it's tells like, you. It's indicator. Indicator, yes, indicator. So like l- life happens through like pr- pleasure and pain and pain teaches us what to avoid and pleasure kind of what to, what to go for but but life is yeah, usually it's not, not black like, and white but but, but but in general but it's usually not like this yeah i agree like the people they really think that they they are often smart like that's that's one of the biggest things of ego you think you're always better than what you are you never have a realistic idea of of your actual capabilities of your health you have no realistic idea of yourself and the biggest thing has been uh, one of the biggest for us has been really realizing the level where we are. Like every, like at every point, like know the level. And I, like years ago, we made a video and I told, like um, there were some lessons that I've learned. And I talk about this, like you need to be able to analyze where you actually are in order to be able to make correct decisions in your training journey. And when it comes to like real like old age, because we are also, you know, in our 30s now, and we really like, we have already a long-term perspective been training over a decade, right? So, the the like from this point onwards, all our training it it has to be something that that really like uh, let's say preserves the health and the strength and even can make it further like uh, much better from this point onwards. And I think for every single like person who grows older at, at, at around thirty years old, of course, there's never too late. Like I say, but at thirty years old, like you should already have an idea of your body. Like you should have a good developed body awareness. Because this is the stuff that everything is in our methods is, is even based on. Yeah, that it's, should be the case. But of course, some people, they have never done any fitness or mm-hmm. exercise their whole life. And yes. they can be 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old. Mm-hmm. So it's not always the case. But you said the good thing about know your level. Mm-hmm. And that's very important because in all walks of life, we always meet these people. They always try to be something other than they who they actually are, like fake it until you make it. Mm. And in every walk of, walk of life, it is like this. And we were never like this. Like we were never like pretend to, pretending to be something we are not. And we were always had this humility of just being like a student, being like a disciple and being able to learn not just from other people, but from ourselves as well. And that's very crucial in making progress and staying healthy. It is to give up this ego of trying to fake it until you make it or just ha- like thinking you have the answers because because fitness and strength training and movement, like this is not like a very simple thing. Like it's it's on an equal level, level as any other form of art or science, like you are not going to be at the PhD level, like a medical doctor or something like this in like one month or six months or like this. So that's why people have to understand that in the beginning, you should learn from many different teachers and masters and trainers because they have the, they have maybe three years of experience, five years of experience of 10 years of experience of research in this stuff and really understanding it, how it actually works because you wouldn't learn to, like, you wouldn't think you are like a very high level, like a medical doctor after one month either. Mm. Because there's so much to learn in practice and in theory. So that's why it's very important to be humble and just understand your own level. Yeah, and and the thing is like people, they do try to educate, but it's usually from these YouTube guys who don't know actually much better. Like they don't really have like yeah, the any better master, knowledge. Master the- YouTube and... <laughs> TikTok and YouTube sort, so they get yeah. like a, they think because they get good tips from some YouTube sorts and like that's all there is to it. But the format determines the the content. Mm-hmm. So of course we try to give the best quality information and the best stuff, but because of the format and because of the the how it like the social media like the optimization works and so on. So the algorithms. The algorithms and like this. That's why people have to be very careful to think 
you can just learn this from by yourself by watching some very short clips of people who you don't even know if they're necessary are are very like knowledgeable and very talented yeah and, and it's just to be like have a certain amount of like questioning also yourself it's even if you didn't have a teacher or something like you, you need to develop some uh ways of uh, like uh, let's say evaluating the information that you get and that only comes through experience but you need to then experiment with things and not expect that you actually know them beforehand like that's also what i did when i didn't always have a teacher you know you need to take training here take training there maybe try something on your own if you can and then see like does it work not not to think like beforehand already that you know the results that are going to happen for example some mobility methods that I tried to utilize that very, very many people were doing at that time. And I was like reading about this from books and trying to check some videos and utilizing them for, uh, for myself. And they didn't really produce very good results. And I, actually, I didn't even see people who have, would have gotten very good results. So it's, there's always that, that also way, like trusting your, your own experience. But and the goal with our methods and tr- programs is always to teach self-awareness mm-hmm. and self-knowledge that you actually become the teacher and the trainer and the master. Mm. Like that should be the end point in almost everything. So yeah. that you actually understand how to move yourself. It is. And and I like I start to think like this is actually it's kind of like like reaching a certain physical maturity, like becoming a physical adult. Because people grow into adulthood and you learn certain skills like, you know, some social skills or your your work skills, whatever your job is. And you're kind of like now you're starting to make money in your own uh, with your own work. You have your own house maybe and, and you're like you're adult. But on the physical side of things, when it comes to like knowing your body, being able to move very joint properly, understanding your posture, being able to correct it during exercises, this let this if if we look at like this as a as a kind of like this spectrum or this um how do how do you say like ladder of or different ages people are like toddlers they're like yes, babies because, in, because, the, in the physical part and because and it is because the school system fails everyone because it's called physical education but you are <laughs> yeah. not actually learning anything about yourself <laughs> Never, you are yeah. just trying different things like yeah. different ball games and different sports but you are not actually learning anything about your body, about your movement, about your functions, like like it should be mandatory learning to learn about the kinesiology and like the joint articulations mm. and breathing and all this stuff, but none of it is present. Yes, it's only it's only like uh, Extent, the sports skills. Yeah, like it's a school play. Some, baseball, football, ice hockey, and even in those ones, you're not really educated. When I was at least in the school, it's it's like you don't really get better. You're just like you are there and you play, and no one is really correcting you or telling you how to do anything better. Yeah, like I, I used to suck in all these mm-hmm. team sports. Like I was the worst possible student. Be, and it is because nobody ever taught me anything. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. how, like how to kick the ball, how to <laughs> catch a ball with your hand. It's just you know, like I don't remember anyone teaching me anything. They just you know just do this, and it's like okay. And some kids they were like natural yeah. talent, so they just learned mm-hmm. immediately. And I was like, uh, what is going on? But now after be, I've been educating myself and my learning about my body now I can learn anything like recently I started playing the battle tennis mm. and I was pretty good like my training partner said like I was very good for the first time the first time yeah 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 <laughs> and because now I have this physical skills and physical knowledge of myself I can learn anything very fast but I just wish I had the same understanding when I was a kid because I could have been great not just good, but great at almost any sport. Mm. Yeah, that, that's the difficult thing because as, as a kid, like you just don't. You, it's almost impossible for you to see your own potential and and to really see that you can get better unless there's like. And it's some, not your responsibility either. It, it's not it's the yeah. parents' responsibility. It's, it's only like it's by chance if your parents like um, you know encourage you. Like I was lucky that my parents actually they they did put me. Not, they didn't even push me. It was just like you know go do for football, try some swimming tried a bit of track and field, uh, a little bit gymnastics or something like this. And like that was that was like a huge thing if I if I think about it now. And it was kind of random because most people's parents they don't even do that. And even though I never like excelled in these things, but at least I did something and it it 
I think he created something, even from a very young age. Yeah, and the problem with growing up is that in many cases your parents have very many limitations and restrictive ideas about fitness and getting older mm. and exercise as well. Because because I remember everyone in my like relatives and all these older people who at the time were maybe 40 years old, so not even old, but everyone was saying that, yeah, when I was young, when I was young, I was good at this. When I was young, I was also able to do this. And, yeah. and now it's like so hard and so blah, 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 blah. But that's like complete nonsense because it's not <laughs> age related. It's your like life related thing. Yeah, because, yeah. Because that's the thing. That's the thing because right now there are people who are 50 years old or 60 years old who are incredibly athletic and healthy mm. and they can wipe the floor with almost any 20 years old. Like recently I started watching this like street beef videos, which is like uh, some amateur level mm. boxing and mixed martial arts. And there was this one 60, over 60 years old guy, and he was beating <laughs> these 20 years old guys. Over, over 60, yeah. yeah. He was like, I think 63 or 64, but he, yeah, yeah but he was like smashing these, yeah, like 20 years old, quite athletic men. Yep. That's pretty ultimate level at 60 years old, fighting, like yes. scrapping there, like with, Yeah, that's crazy. But it yeah, yeah, it gives a perspective. Yeah, but nowadays even it's like it's common knowledge and it's like a common understanding even in sports and athletes and among everyone that you start to decline after 30 years old or something like this. Mm. And in many cases they say maybe 40 years old, but they never talk about why do you decline. They always talk about it's age related, but it's actually more related to your activity and your lifestyle. Because we, in the some previous podcast we said that uh, like your testosterone level starts to plummet after mm. like 25 years old or something like this, and people think it's because of your age. Like when you get one year older, your testosterone level goes 10 points less or something like this. Just to give you an example, mm. but in reality, it is because with age people become more sedentary. They <laughs> eat less and they have just move no they eat a lot more they get become sedentary and they start to use drugs for yeah, everything yeah drugs and medicine and accumulation is, of all kind of toxins yeah I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah they are, yeah accumulation of toxins is very important and the metal yeah in their, heavy metals yeah yeah so it's actually not because of your age of course it's one factor mm -hmm. but it's actually a small factor it's because of your lifestyle and what happens year after year and likewise this athleticism and this uh thing how you like what happens with age is also not it's age is only one factor and not even the most important one the lifestyle and what you do during these years is the determining determining factor for your like decline or like growth yeah you can find these examples like some of the athletes even in, there was the bernard hopkins right the boxer i think he's like is he now like 50 or 60 or something but he was yeah he was a world champion yeah at 50 years old yes and he beat like 25 25 years old professional highest level boxer to and, become a world yeah. champion at 50 years old And many people would be like, hey, well, that's just genetics also. Like that that guy is, you know, freak. And I'm sure there may be some these kind of people as well. But if you look at his videos, the Hopkins and everything, like he all the time talks about the lifestyle, health. You can like see his diet, eating clean and everything. Yeah, like uh, I, mean, I think he ate like vegetarian <laughs> and no drugs, no alcohol, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, very exactly. clean and like no like dirty food and no sodas and like super clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that that gives you the idea, I think, of how important the lifestyle is, like how huge like weight it, it has on this matter of getting actually older. Yeah, I and mean, not just lifestyle, but also how you train, because he was mm. also very smart about training. Like he wasn't lifting heavy heavy weights and breaking his body in mm. so many ways. So he was actually very smart lifestyle combined with very smart training. Mm -hmm. yeah, and this is exactly like what I also like i don't think about my life if i look at the pre in in 20 years or 30 years i don't see my life as like going slowly down and i'm just going to be like this 
Like, I just, <laughs> yeah. this is not my vision. Like, of, of course, I can know what eventually happens. You know, everything can happen. But the way I see it, I'm going to be like 60 or 70 years old doing my monkey walks and, mm. you know, maybe cartwheels or something. I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but I see myself like moving very freely. You know, if you have like uh, grandchildren or something at some, po- at some point, like I, I want to stay active. I think that's a... Uh, that's how I see it, and I don't. I don't see that there's any excuse why I should get like really bad on that way. Yeah, for example, one of my great heroes was the Jack Lalane, mm. and he was incredibly healthy, fit, strong, had conditioning and endurance, and all these qualities at 90 years old. Like he was swimming, swimming, and taking like doing some crazy stuff yeah. at 90 years old, and almost 100, I think. Yeah. So yep. he, he lived a very long life and these examples are everywhere. So people think like nowadays one thing people accept is that yeah, you still have your strength and power at fifty or sixty years old. Okay. Like they say, because many powerlifters are high, at the, still at the highest level at fifty. And even in arm wrestling, like the Alan Fisher, he's like the multiple time world champion. Like he's sixty six or sixty seven right now. And he's still one of the best arm wrestlers in the world. And he was, even at 60, he was world champion. So, mm-hmm. and he was beating, and he's not even a big guy. He's like 75 kilos, 165 pounds, and doesn't even train a lot in the gym. He does mostly swimming and arm wrestling, exercising, mm-hmm. and stuff like this. But he was, in because arm wrestling is a strength, strength sport. It's like, a, of course, there's technique, but it's mostly strength and endurance <coughs> and he was at the highest level against against young guys and 30 years old guys at 60 <laughs> and he's not yeah. he's, he's just one example but but yeah but the point here is that people nowadays people because of these examples they accept that strength and power you will still keep it but then mm. what they don't accept is that you lose your explosiveness and and mobility mm. and like this but even these examples can be found like if there's some 50, 60 years old yogis, they still have incredible mobility, mm. incredible flexibility, and so on. So actually, like said before, it's actually re- like the decline is the result of your activity and lifestyle and not because of your age. Yep. And like I think these people... Yeah, well, ex- I don't know, but explosiveness, maybe certainly things will go down. Like that's that is a fact. But but how I, much? even I don't maybe. But yeah. even because recently I we watched together the Roy Jones Junior fight. Well, that's actually a good 50, point. And he was fifty four years old, and he still had incredible <laughs> speed <laughs> and explosiveness at fifty four. Yeah. But the problem with him was that his knees were destroyed and hips and his hips were destroyed. So he didn't move very well, mm. which yeah. also impacted his explosiveness. Good but point. he was still incredibly explosive. And, and actually the arm wrestling strength also, that is like nervous system stuff. Like yes. to be able to do that, that's nerves. And what people usually, what they lose over the age, like they might have that, that speed or even per, able to do some, you know, it's pretty unilateral in some ways, like arm wrestling maybe. It's not the most maybe well-rounded athleticism. <laughs> no. But it's still like you can... Sh- see that these guys like i also watch the arm wrestler videos and these guys are 50 60 whatever and they they have incredible power like they are like doing stuff with larry wheels and they're who is really young guy super huge guy very strong guy and they are stronger than this guy so it's you know regards to that yeah i like you said maybe people accept that you know old age you can still become very strong and and you can your nervous system can work but it's what happens usually. It's it's uh, with these people the structure of their body, like you said, uh, Roy Jones Jr. His knees start to collapse. So you may, this is what usually starts to at least like happen for people from, from bad is, training habits, just and, the joints wear and tear. Right? Yeah, and it is, and because of the activity, what they have done, because they haven't yep, done the mobility exactly. and movement training and all this stuff. Instead, they have been like, like. Uh, destroying their joints for year after year after year. Mm. And that's why they cannot move anymore. That's why they lose explosiveness and power and strength in their lower body because the joints are destroyed. Yep. And, and it's not because of age, but because of how you have lived your life. Yep, it's all about like how you actually train yourself in the long term because mm. this kind of uh, people that you see, 
you know, you might, it would be so easy to think, okay, well, old age just happens like that. But if you saw their training, what they did, and it's, even with these arm wrestlers, like they, they don't have the most sophisticated training, for example, for their entire body. Like they're very good at just training that specific arm wrestling strength. But when it comes to the rest of the body, they might have no idea. And when I was watching these videos, they don't really properly even like understand really how to move the joints in a pure manner. They don't understand how to like move a joint in isolation. They don't understand stability. They all they have is like full body, just like like this way. Everything is full body motion, and this is why we also went so deeply into being able to separate these different joints and their movements, because that is actually a huge part of longevity. Is that you have control over your joints, and it's so in a way it's very simple. But like you said in the beginning, it is like a, you can reach kind of PhD level, like a real like a doctorate level. You can take it so far to control of the body. And it doesn't like happen just like that, but it can be trained. And it's one of the best protection protections for old age or for joint injuries is just having able to being able to move them normally, not even the range of motion like some extreme yogis have, but just having even the, the normal regular strength over every single joint in your body. And most people don't have this at all. Yeah. And actually, yeah, the most important thing like is also that you are able to do these movements and withstand resistance and do these exercises in a way that your muscles and tendons are doing all the work. Mm. Because how we trained in the beginning was that the movement was not pure. So the resistance went to our joints. It went to the... All the ligaments. Yeah, and ligaments. It went to the, yeah, it went to the cartilage and the ligaments. And that's how most people use their bodies. They the resistance that they absorb from the whatever activity they are doing, it goes to the ligaments and cartilage. And it, they, even actually tendons in a way yeah, you, yeah. you can say like... Yes, yeah. but that's why it was very important for us to learn how to exercise and how to move the body in ways that we are f primarily and f first supported by our muscles. That way you will never feel any joint discomfort because nothing goes to your joint because you have these uh, these barriers and this like armor like mm. everywhere in your body and you should be able to use it and if you learn how to move properly and how to contract the muscles properly then you can absorb all this resistance and all this stress to your muscles and and it's fine because for mu because muscles they regenerate very easily Mm -hmm. like, and they will grow stronger as a result. And yeah. that's actually the the main thing about the athlete 20xx method because it's not just refining your movement, but it's also teaching you how to move the joints and how to move the body and how to exercise in a way that you are actually mm -hmm. doing everything correctly with the muscles. Yeah, this is the, I think this has the biggest, like one of the, there's another part we maybe talk about also, but this kind of control let's say like a refined control of the body i think it makes the biggest impact because it's it's cons in con it concerns every single exercise every single movement like every time i go to the gym i can lift weights or do some calisthenics it's always there i always carry this ability to both sense what is going on in my body and then try to guide all the stress into the muscles like you said even like doing some some dips or pull-ups i'm always like feeling like wait a minute am i actually engaging here what i'm trying to train to, in order to really like make this movement so that it, it's supported and effective and it feels like I'm really like utilizing the strength of my muscles. And it feels like you're like bubble wrapped <laughs> by it, your muscles. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Like yes. we sometimes use the term like floating on your muscles, you know, whichever position, position you go to, you should have the, how do I say, the signal from your muscles and, and from actually from your entire body, you get these signals, like how is it going? And this is something you need to learn to pay attention to all the time. And this is, like you said, this is the Adlet to Next method is precisely about this. It's about developing a consciousness that carries with you in all of your training. That's why it's not just, you know, do this exercise, do it eight reps and you're all good to go. It, it never is like that with us because this doesn't bring people to the physical maturity that we talked about earlier. Like the physical adult adulthood, it requires you have a deeper sense of your body. And this actually, it's it goes to taking respons responsibility over your body. 
like this is also I think what we are we are about like we are always ready to take the responsibility not to what's somewhere else or what's some examples of what will happen to you like like you're kind of a unique scenario in this in this case like don't think that some bad examples people breaking their bodies is normal like you can really like uh have a very different type of future depending on what kind of training methods you choose to do. Like we said, like the power and strength, you can have it at any age. Of course, when you're maybe 80, 90 years old, you, it will be like a real decline. Mm. But until at least 60, you will have incredible levels of strength and power and all this and raw strength and the isometric strength especially. But but what is actually like with these ar- ar- arm wrestling, wrestling guys and all these powerlifter guys, they have the raw strength. Like they have the raw capacity to do amazing things. Mm. But what they are lacking is the mobility and movement. And like that's actually how we start to see is that the secret is actually to have the capacity and capability for mm. raw strength, but also have the mobility and limberness. Mm. And like that's the that's the ultimate combination. Like have the be as no, maybe not as mobile, but be mobile like a yogi, but have the strength and power of a, like a arm wrestler or powerlifter. Like that's the perfect combination. Or just and, a wrestler. <laughs> oh, wrestler! Actually, the wrestlers are the ultimate athletes. They yeah. are like the like people like to say like gymnasts are the or ultimate, but actually wrestlers mm. are the ultimate in many ways because they withstand other people. So their resistance is actually even crazier in many yeah. ways. Because yeah. of course, mastery over body weight is always incredible, but mastery over your body weight and other people who try to go against you, against you, that's also another level. Yeah, it is. And, and this, this limberness, you know, this ability to move, because we talk about very refined approach, but we haven't really mentioned, for example, movement training, which it is not at the same, is not in the same way controlled that, for example, the athletic training that we have. But the movement training is still amazing for the rejuvenation of the body and just maintaining, uh, let's say, the movement ability in your body and movement ability in so many different positions, like the crawling pattern, I think is something that people will lose it. The older they get, like they, they can no longer even crawl on the floor. And I started to think about this, uh, for example, I sometimes call to my grandmother and of course her, you know, her poster is a bit like bent and she has some problems with her body. Uh, but she's like, what is she, like 86 or 87, like close to 90 years old already. And she tells me like she, like every single morning she walks, she takes like walks. And I'm just thinking like, that's that's amazing. Like I'm, I'm very happy that she's actually doing that because her, it's clearly that her, for example, her brain is working great. You know, she also has like social interactions with other grannies in the area and so on. But this walking thing, like doing something every single morning, even at an old age makes a big impact. But then I start to imagine, okay, uh, what if you did, for example, catwalk or bear walk every single morning, starting from, you know, age 50, 60 or something? Like, what if you did that? Like, oh, what 20. Kind of, yeah, yeah that's, that's the thing. But if, thinking about like, if there's some older people, but it's oh, yeah, yeah. you can do for sure, like, yes, even from this point on where we are, like every single morning from 20 or 30 years, whatever you are, actually, you start to do. Like, it doesn't have to be much, but think about what kind of... Uh, pr- uh, I would say longevity it would give to you because catwalk, for example, you know, you get your shoulders, you get your core is going to be trained, uh, your core stability is going to be trained, but your coordination will be trained with that, your uh, agility will be trained with that. So it's, I think, like the movement is like rejuvenation in a way. And if you're able to maintain that, you know, it's like movement training is yeah. like we have been saying it for a long time, it's one of the secrets like youthfulness and with vitality, mm. just proper movement. It is because it's only one part and like super important part what we talk about this pure controlled joint movement, being able to just really feel everything. But the other part is is having uh, this kind of natural movement abilities. And we're talking about really this pliability of the body. And this is not only uh, like yogic flexibility. Yogi, yogis can be flexible, but... Um, it doesn't mean necessarily that they can move well or they can necessarily control their bodies in often many cases. But there's also the the movement which combines flexibility. It combines movement. It combines good quality joint movement, floating on top of your muscles. 
this is, I think, what movement uh, combines together. And when when you're doing movement training, you're training all of these together. Like and, at least how yeah. we do it, because that's everyone how, yeah. everyone else have different, very different types of yep. movement training. But that's how we do it. For sure, yeah. But this is what we at least emphasize. And we, you know, I, I was talking about just the catwalk because it's quite simple. You know, if you just want to do morning some catwalk, but like we have like dozens, you know, like almost nearly a hundred even flow movement, even even in the movement training section that you can be utilizing to really cover all these things, cover all your sides, you know, all your fascias, all your meridians, all your whatever, like, uh, change, kinetic change you have in your body. You can be utilizing with these movements and stimulating them and maintaining also. If I were to think about, like, a recipe for success when it, when it comes to aging, mm-hmm. it would be, of course, not everyone do not have the same goals, but for myself, I would say focus on becoming as strong as possible, like in this raw strength manner. How we use like the clubs and mazes and mm. yeah, we have also a- and wrestling a little and bit different raw strength. We don't do really powerlifting. Yeah, we, we don't do po- powerlifting. More but strongman towards. Yeah, yeah, we are more towards like strongman and the ancient stuff like the yep. mazes and clubs and like stones, natural stones and the mm, sandbags, yeah, sandbags yeah. and like this, like. But anyway, whatever <laughs> your way of getting strong. Like mm. for me, it would be to get as strong as possible, while staying and becoming as pliable and limber as possible. So it's like the combination of this strength training, like pure, like pure strength training, which is like a. It's partially skill strength, actually. Yeah, yeah, in, in yeah. But actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's fine. Yeah, like that's the. It it, it actually yeah. gives you certain skills that you can then apply. Like the the way we train strength is something that quite directly transfers to like wrestling, to being able to throw people, to being able to like crush them, like tie them up, yes. like that that type of strength training, and it is very much related to skill. Uh, but but that is not the one that preserves necessarily the yeah the health of the body. It preserves your strength to produce this kind yeah, of yeah. It, it's not so much about health. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's more about yep. functionality and performance and mm. and your personal interests becoming just. It just feels good to have the the crushing strength and power. Mm. It just you know makes you feel like more more like a man or yeah. like this. But the other mm. side is the movement training and mobility training, which is it's it gives you real free freedom. Like if this skill training gives you like a sense of power in many ways, mm. especially for your ego and stuff like this. Movement training and mobility training it gives you freedom because you. Mm-hmm. You are freedom, free from your pain, free and free to use your body in any way possible. Like so, you can actually, you, like the ability to be free of pain and and to move your body weight freely in daily life and in space and mm. like whatever activity you, activity act, uh, activity you want to do. Like that's real freedom. Like yeah. that's the purest form of freedom, I would say. Yeah, I have to agree. Like. And and it also gives just a foundation, like to even utilize the raw, let's say, raw strength that you have in the, to the best of your ability. Like if you don't maintain at the same time the movement and the mobility, you know, you cannot. I think you can't use even the strength to your fullest to the fullest extent. No, and you are actually one trick pony. Like all these mm. armrestlers and powerlifters, they are incredibly strong in their domain in the skill aspect, mm. but. That's all they're good for, in yeah. many ways. Especially when they get older, when you when they're young, they still have the pliability and movement and freedom. Mm. But when they get older, they become one trick ponies. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm incredibly strong at bench press or back squat, but that's it. Yep. Or arm wrestling, and otherwise their bodies are incredibly stiff, incredibly limited, and they lack freedom. They lack joy. They lack all this. Uh, possibilities and opportunities of actually mm. being able to do all other stuff. So that's why it's very important to have the freedom aspect, yeah, which this, is movement and mobility. This can happen, and and this this type of uh, strength. Well, for example, also the calisthenics athletes, they like the, that skill strength that they have for these different levers and you know human flex and whatever they have, like muscle ups, that also, that's something that you could see uh, that is their like strength arena where they try, try to get as strong as possible. But those skills might 
you might lose them like almost entirely. Even some powerlifters, maybe, you know, you may lose your ability to even properly squat if you don't really maintain this healthy base. I think like... Yeah, and many, just, yeah, many calisthenics athletes, they lose their abilities mm. when they get older very easily. Yep. Just like the elbows get destroyed, <coughs> their shoulders get destroyed because they lack the proper strength training. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the, that's the... Yeah, like I started by talking about this gene of, of fitness, you know, it's the, the trade-off that they make often time un- unconsciously. But I hope that we can like just shed light on the on people so you can actually make a conscious choice in this matter. And you understand that they're actually, you don't have to even make a trade-off. Because the, what we always preach is that you can get the strength, you can get these abilities and even much greater than you could imagine without causing this pain or, or causing let's say, damage and wreaking havoc in their body. Yeah, I would say the, the genie method, which what you talk about, is the... Or example, yeah. Yeah, the example, it's <laughs> it's the dirty way. It's the, yeah, it's the dirty way because they, these people usually use drugs, they use steroids, they, and they use the very crazy trading methods to get the results. Mm. But as a result... They get destroyed. It's nearly so it's, the opposite of yeah, what we do. But what we do is the clean way. Mm. Like we don't want to sacrifice anything. We don't want to lose anything in exchange for what we want. So this is actually the clean way. Like this yeah. is yeah. Like we are not polluting the environment and <laughs> killing the animals and <laughs> destroying the oceans. Like we are just doing everything like in yeah. a clean way. Yeah, the others are demons and they have everything. They're doing like everything as, as bad as possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they, yeah, no. they get energy. They get energy. They get uh, results, but they're also burning fossil fuel, fuels, fuels, how do, fuels, yeah. fossil fuels and all this stuff. So and we, we are taking this metaphor very and far. And then they are, wor- <laughs> they are worshiping the Satan and, yeah. and killing babies to get results. But we like, we just do yeah. everything in the light side. Jedi code. Yeah, light side of the force. <laughs> but yeah, jokes aside, that's, uh, I also think like... But that's the reality. Yeah. It's of course not a scream and as like this but it's yeah not as contrasted but but there it is real like dark side light side i, I believe it it's very real a thing but it's yes. just not it's not exactly like in the movies but it's also the you know it's, it's i think it starts with the spirit like like we've been talking about certain consciousness and, and consciousness and awareness this you have to develop this and this is why i emphasize it so much although people sometimes maybe they get lost in hearing it because they just want to give me just quickly the exercise but you have to consider the becoming a physical adult and truly educating yourself in this in this area of, of fitness i don't think there's any other way i don't see how people even would like to like grow into old age without having the understanding of their bodies like it should be something that you're actually curious about like you should want to develop a relationship with your body and the problem is with these other people that they the relationship with their body is abusive you know, they always decide what to do. And, yes. and, and the other relationship is something, it's a healthy relationship where both, you know, parties listen to each other and learn to communicate. Yeah, I would say like the most exciting thing about life is learning more about yourself, learning mm. more about your psychology and body, oh, and, yeah. but also about learning more about life and other people. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's All of this goes, of course, beyond, you know, just... Uh, Physic, the physical stuff and lifting the weight and doing the very concrete task. There's the entire life. I, I think the entire life actually will get affected. Yeah, by, like for by me, it's this. incredibly exciting just to learn more about everything about myself. <laughs> yeah. You know, just train new aspect of my fitness or new aspect of my body and mm-hmm. just see it grow and expand. Just because you become better, and when you become better, you just feel better and. You look better, and you, because, yeah, I can't yeah. understand how people feel bored with with training, or I can understand. And I yeah, of course, because they lack the understanding and knowledge, so they don't really know what they're doing. Because mm. at least for me, it's like if you are not good at something, you usually don't like it. Like people like things they are good at, and they see improvements. Mm. Because even fitness and movement and all this stuff, it's can be quite challenging and complex at first but you just start from simple and then 
go deeper and deeper and deeper and it becomes more exciting the deeper you go. Yeah, it's it will and rewarding. That's true. Like I, I would say, like if you uh, start this journey and you start to study your body, uh, you will never get like a boring time with your body. And that's one of the things as well, you know, in, in regards to like being old age and maybe not even being able to do everything you did younger. Like understanding that the weightlifting or some hard training is not the only way to train because that's for most people is only the gym stuff like that's the only way to even get results i feel like the older i get the more i get uh, freedom to choose this incredible variety of training and something that's accessible for me anywhere i go i don't need a gym i don't need equipment like my body is my gym in in some ways and and for i would say and for happiness like making progress is one of the most important things mm. and when you have this knowledge and when you have this understanding and when you know how to train yourself you feel like you are making progress always yeah like and you it start doesn't to notice the like little it doesn't matter if everything else in your life is going downhill you are making <laughs> at least progress in one area <laughs> yeah that's actually funny because i just maybe i remember from my like teenagers and everything when i was training there was i wasn't always very really happy with my life and you know of course you're a teenager you have some angst and you know i don't know but mm -hmm. difficult social life but i always felt like uh, with with training that was something that was just you know like this is something where i feel so amazing because I, i can actually progress on that but of course from those years you know now like over 10 years uh, to the future it's still there my physique is still something i can just always follow how it is and follow its progress And I can, like I was about to say to you, you can notice these little things. You start to, once you get to know your body, you start to notice the progress in, in such small things. Like you're happy that your knee actually suddenly moves better. You're like, wow, okay, I didn't notice this before or whatever, like your elbow or your, your shoulder, you're able to pull weight in a manner that feels much better, much more solid, much more stronger. It's, I mean, this is all something that is, uh, it will never go away. You know, until your old age, I think you can forever, like, pretty much keep keep learning this stuff, keep learning about yourself and about training. And I think that's a good point to finish. All right, we do that. Yeah, stay strong. Stay strong. <laughs>